All right, guys, we're back. Uh, chapter one, section one, three, our last section that we have in the first chapter. So it goes pretty quickly. We're going to split this in half. So we'll call this uh, section one, three, A, and then we'll come back and finish up the section pretty lengthy. So again, we don't want to overload you, but a lot of familiar things that we've talked about before. Okay. So what learning targets, once again, kind of a nice little thing to talk about and get in the habit of. Uh, you know, we want to be able to calculate measures of center. We've done that before. We've used the calculator to do that. Uh, calculate interpret uh, variability. So we talked about range, standard deviation, interquartile range. We've done that before in LG2. Uh, explain how outliers affect that. that. That's something we'll hit again. And then um, when we get into the second part, uh, we'll get into, uh, in the part B part, we'll get into the one and a half times the interquartile rule. We'll interpret box plots. We've done those before, and then uh, use those to compare distributions. So a lot of things that we've done before, but we'll kind of clean up and reiterate those types of things here. Uh, so again, the mean, everyone knows how to do that. We've been doing that since grade school, for Christ's sake. Um, it, you're just going to add up all the values and divide by how many there are. Um, now remember, uh, we use this uh, typically x with a bar, x bar is how we pronounce that. That is typically how we use the mean. Um, for a set of data, um, for, a pop, or for a sample anyway. So basically, you're just going to add them up see, and divide by how many there are. Okay, so in this case, here we go. Yep, add up all these things, divide by 20. You see that the mean is 3.15 goals. And again, it's something that you can't get 0.15 goals, but uh, that's, that's the average that we have for the mean. So if we put this in a dot plot, again, we could mark the mean right there. You can kind of see that as we, as we see the distribution. All right. Now, uh, X bar, that, that's a sample. Okay. From a sample, we call that a statistic. Now, if it's from the population, if we have everything, uh, we'll use the Greek letter mu here. And that, that's from a population. That will be a parameter. A characteristic of a population is a parameter. If it's from a sample, it's a, stat a statistic. All right. So keep that in mind as we move forward. All right. Now, a statistical measure is, is resistant if it isn't sensitive to extreme values. All right, so, you know, 9 and 10 were kind of extreme values on that. So if we remove those, look what happens to the mean. The mean drops, if we take those two uh, situations out, the mean now drops to 2.44. You can see that the mean is not resistant to those extreme values. Those, those uh, extreme values, 9 and 10, will pull that mean towards it and make it seem maybe artificially high. And that's kind of the danger of having outliers and, and uh, maybe talking about maybe throwing them out in some data sets that we use. All right, so again, the mean is sensitive to extreme values, so it is not a resistant measure of center. All right, the median, however, is resistant because it's just the middle value is all it is. All right, now if the data values are odd, the median is the middle value. If the data value is even, you got to find the average of the two middle values. Okay, so uh, I think we've seen that before. So again, whenever you do your data, if you're doing it by hand, uh, again, you got to put them in order from least to greatest. And then the median, of course, is the middle one. Now, since this is 25, uh, you just basically count to 13 because then there's 12 on either side. That works out really slick. Again, it's got to be ordered in, in least to greatest in order to do it by hand. Now, in this case, there's 20 games, so it's an even number. So what you have is you have 10 here and 10 here. So it's the middle of those two numbers, and coincidentally, uh, it's going to be two. But if this was a two and that was a three, uh, then the median would be two and a half. Okay, so you gotta you got to make sure that you do that. Again, your calculator, we've done that in the stat mode before. Uh, putting it in, you can find the median that way as well. But we're just kind of working on how to do it by hand uh, so you understand how to do that. Okay, now comparing the mean and median. Now, if it's skewed to the left, you'll notice that the mean is lower than the median because remember we talked about that that these these extreme values kind of down here they pull the mean towards it whereas the median is the middle number it's a little more resistant now if it's skewed to the right you see here now the mean will be higher than the median because these outliers like we had before will pull that towards it where the median stays it's not it's resistant so it doesn't really move now if it's a roughly symmetric data set like this the mean and median will be very close together it doesn't mean that they'll always be exactly the same but they should be very close in their measurements. So keep that in mind that that mean will get dragged towards the skewness. Okay, so uh, again, as we highlight that, um, some things that we have here is that if it's roughly symmetric, the mean and median will be similar. If it's uh, strongly skewed, the mean will be pulled in the direction of the skewness. 
Okay, so if it's right, if it's skewed right, we expect the mean to be greater than the median. If it's skewed left, we expect the mean to be less than that. Okay, and remember that that median we use that a lot of times because it isn't, it is resistant to outliers, but the mean is not. And that's the downfall of the mean. Now again, the range is very simply the high minus the low, max minus the min. Okay, so very easily easy to figure out. It's a number set. Uh, the range obviously is not resistant. Uh, not a resistant measure of variability because obviously extreme values will make that range bigger than what it is. Okay. All right. Now standard deviation. This is a way that we can use to uh, measure variability. And what you're going to do is you're going to find the mean of the distribution. You're going to find the deviation. So in other words, take each individual value and subtract the mean from it. We're going to square it. What that does is it makes it all positive. We're going to add up all the squared. We're going to sum those all up. Divide by one less than the number of terms, n minus 1. And that's what's called the sample variance. Okay, we noticed that was uh, not shown on our calculator, but if you take the square root of that number, you get the standard deviation. On the calculator, you'll see a Greek letter sigma, look like fancy O is what it looks like, and then to get the variance, you'd have to square that. But uh, this is the way that you get the standard deviation. Okay, so basically what a standard deviation is telling you is that it's, what's the typical distance you are away from the mean? Okay, that's what it's telling you. So here we go. Let's just kind of say this. We have... Uh, 11 high school students asked how many close friends they had. Here are the, they have the responses. So we have each number, 11 of them there. We're going to take, we're going to find, first of all, find the mean. Now, okay, it turned out pretty nice that the mean was, if we add them all up, divide by 11, the mean was 3. So if we take 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, and do that, 3 minus 3, 4 minus 3, 6 minus, okay, so we get all those. So you notice that there's, there's negatives and positives. So we always, we want those to all be positive. Otherwise, it doesn't seem like there's any deviation. So we square those. And then we add them all up, and we get 18, as you can see right here. All right, then what we do is we are going to divide by 1 less than the number. So we had 11, so we're going to divide that by 10. And that gives us the sample variance. That's 1.8. All right, so now to get the standard deviation, we're just going to take the square root of that number, and we get 1.34. So that's kind of the typical distance that we are away from the mean when we do that. So uh, the smaller the number, um, you know, that means that, you know, it, it means that it's pretty, not, not so variant. Okay. So the bigger the number is, means that there's more variation and whatnot. So th that number you should get should always be gr greater than or equal to zero. Zero, of course, if there's no variation. Um, it, it's not resistant to measures of variability because, uh, because obviously the mean is used. So that isn't. And, uh, and again, it measures the variation about the mean. How, uh, typically, how far are we, can, can we assume we're going to be away from the mean on any given variable? All right. Now, measuring variability, another way to do that is, you know, you might say, well, the range, you know, high minus low, that, that's not resistant. But what we can do is do something called the interquartile range. And what that does is it basically measures the middle 50% is what it does. So if we can divide our data into quartiles, not just in half, but into fourths, um, you know, we can do that. So we can find the median, make an equal amount above and below, and then just find the median of each half. All right, so the first quartile is the median of the left, and the third quartile is the median of the ones on the right. So we can find those. All right, now the interquartile range is where you take the third quartile minus the first quartile, and that tells you kind of the distance between the middle 50%, in other words, between the third quartile and the first quartile. Now that is resistant to, uh, it is a resistant measure because the outliers won't affect it because the outliers are outside of those first and third quartiles. So it's just kind of another way of measuring uh, some variability where it's resistant to that. So let's kind of walk through this again. If we were to do this, um, putting them in order from least to greatest, uh, we can very simply find, um, you know, the median here, 22.5. Then measure here, we can see that the uh, first quartile is going to be at 15 and the third quartile is going to be at 45. Um, I'm sorry, 42.5. Sorry, it was in the middle there. My arrow was off just a little bit. Sorry. And uh, so we have those. And so to find the interquartile range, just take Q3 minus Q1. That's 27.5 minutes. And again, always want to make sure that we're labeling it in context so it's not just a number hanging out there. We want to identify exactly what that is as we go. So we basically say the range of the middle half of the travel times for the New Yorkers in the sample is about 27, it's 27 and a half minutes is what that is. Okay. All right. Well, that takes us up. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got a little bit more here. We're going to talk about identifying this. Actually...
Yes, we are done for today. We'll save that for next time. So that's the first part. We'll get working on those problems, and we'll wrap up 1-3 the next time we see you. Until then, I'm Mr. Boone.